Hey guys, this is Chaos with Tape, and today you join me for episode 8 of Solar Civilization. And today I'm launching the first part of my space station. Um, this, um, this is just the core, and it's just going to be a small research station, nothing huge. Um, because, well, I don't have the technology yet, and because it's good to start off small and have something more realistic and move into crazy fueling stations where my battle cruisers dock. Although I don't know if I'll bother building anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's it's a nice idea. Anyway, this is, of course, um, I think you've probably already seen this, maybe last episode, my new uh, uh, launch vehicle. This isn't in the reusable setup, but uh, hopefully I will be able to reuse this uh, sort of thing. There will be some tests of that at the end of the video, which go quite nicely. But anyway, um... It is also hugely overfueled because this isn't a particularly heavy payload. Um, probably the heaviest I've launched in the series so far because it is a station, but um, it is just mainly habitation. And it does have a little uh, little pod on it which is basically just uh, with the crew in it and it has all life support because this is not the life support module, it is just uh, the crew module. So I have about, well, I have 49 days life support in here divided by three people, so like some life of life support or like 16 days life support in here so uh like in a, a couple of launches i'll launch a life support module or maybe next launch but anyway now i'm using the um the pod as a tug to get myself uh away from the main stage and i believe now we're back into one times time accelerate because that was obviously sped up because i tend to speed up launches because they're not hugely interesting but anyway i'll just push this out of the way of the uh second stage because I need to deorbit that because you don't want space to break um, uh, but yeah uh, this uh, little pod does have all the life support a couple of small engines um, basically just here to make the uh, station slightly functional for a while I it is um, as you can see a laboratory and a habitation module it also has some solar panels and um, a few structural parts to make it look nicer one of them, I think, is the KW. One of the KW parts, which look quite good. Uh, I almost use some B9 stuff, but eh, I was, you know, I prefer how uh, that little panel connected to one of the solar panels looks. Uh, not solar panels, uh, docking arrays looks. But that's not really important. I've just got to deorbit this. Um, I should. I didn't really need to push that station so far away, but uh, because this has torque, because usually I have to turn them around with the engines, so it means going forward first. But um. But it, you know, it was a nice little graceful scene. But uh, anyway, Bill Kerman, Ronnie Kerman, and Gene Mun Kerman need to get into their um, get into their habitation modules. Uh, Bill Kerman, obviously the commander of the station. Uh, Gene Mun, a scientist, and Ronnie, the flight expert. Uh, Jebediah decided he didn't want to be on this uh, on this station, stuck in stuck near Kerbin, can't go out exploring and. Uh, I've forgotten the names of my other Kerbin, Kerbals. Well, there's, there's obviously Bob Kerman, and um, I think I have one called Franklin Kerman now. That's kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, I actually I need to point this north first because then it'll stay. The docking points will stay pointing in the same direction. It will just spin on, the, on its axis, which will make it nice and easy to dock to. Um, yeah, this is at one times time accelerate. So this is basically just me being slow and things. It's like when I do dockings. I like to do them very slowly and gracefully because it's a little bit of fun. Um, I just like doing things realistically. But uh, yeah, you know, I want to do things realistically in the series, but kind of obviously move on from where we are now, or it's just fly to the station, fly back, fly to the station, fly back. But anyway, Bill Kerman has uh, had enough of that pod and decides he must take command of this great station where he will be for quite a while, I reckon. Um, you can see the Keithane sats, uh, the sphere of influence change of one of the Keithane satellites is in a couple of days. Um, the one I launched last episode, actually. Um, we'll check that out soon. Uh, Geneman next, uh, the scientist, wants to start conducting research right away. Um, just, I guess, hey look, my pencil floats. But uh, we have already been to space, so surely he should know that at least. I'm just going to take a quick drink, because I have a coffee and, uh, you know, it's going to go cold. Yeah, um, and it looks quite nice with all the flags on it, but you can't really see it brilliantly because uh, the sun's on the other side of the station, 
I didn't put any lights on this, but I will probably put lights on uh, on other bits of the station to make it look cool. And you can colour them now, so I'm thinking of making some green docking lights, although it might just look a bit dumb. But who cares? It's 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 a disco station. It's uh you know. Anyway, um I think that's about it for the station for now, I'm hoping, because I've said that and I'd really like it to cut away right now. There we go. Anyway, with the key thing satellite, annoyingly some goon, some idiot back at base forgot to turn, forgot to extend the solar panels and we've run out of electric charge and now can't extend the solar panels or do anything. So this is just going to fly past Minmus and I'm either going to have to rescue it or send another one. And it makes more sense just to send another one. Um, so yeah, this will be stuck in orbit. Maybe when I unlock the grabbing arms, which will be fairly soon, um, I'll come and just pull it back from orbit because there are a few probes stuck in orbit that I don't want to just delete because that's that's unrealistic. But the huge amount of batteries were not enough for the journey to Minmus. So um, no keythane from Minmus. But now something very very cool. This is my Grasshopper Mark III. This is the main stage you just saw um, launch the uh, station to orbit. Um, but with a slightly changed fuel uh, fuel setup and some probes on it, um, I've given it enough um, 360 liters of fuel to get all the way up to about three kilometers, and then um, a 360 liters to drop back. Now the purpose of this is that I need to learn how to land coming back at the kind of speeds I'll be coming back at, because usually when you're about to hit the ground, you're going about 120 meters a second. So I need to know exactly when to slow down from this. So this. Um, is a pretty good test. I'm using the Translatron because that does make it a lot easier and it means I don't have to work too hard on controlling it and maintaining throttle, it just makes it logical. So I've already set it up for kill horizontal speed and to slow me down to a, spe a speed of minus 10 meters a second. So we're going to let this fall back. We've got to try and maintain attitude control with the SAS unit. Um, not too difficult because it's got quite a lot of uh, power, but at about 1700 meters above the ground I'm going to hit keep vertical, it will ignite one engine. That's all I'm using for this because I don't want to use up fuel too fast, so uh, I'm going to use just the one engine, and that's kind of how Falcon 9 does it, and that's what I base this on. And then when it's time I will slow down to minus one meters a second. We want to slow down just above the ground, not too early or we'll run out of fuel, and not too late or we have this whole thing where we hit the ground, and yeah. but uh, now we've slowed down 150 meters above the sea level about 70 meters above the ground, 75 is our true altitude as you can see from the surface information. Now we need to drop a little faster because we are running out of fuel. Uh, so I cut this up to minus 3. This can land quite hard actually because those landing legs are pretty hardy. Um, geez, I keep changing it, but now we're going to want to slow down a little bit more. Um, when we're just above the ground, there, throttle up and land perfectly. That works. That is enough fuel to soft land me wherever I land. Maybe not enough fuel to redirect me to land, but it is a hell of a start. So that will be implemented, hopefully, on the next mission with that launch stage. But anyway, now we've got a cool little plane. You'll notice there's a little rocket engine on this. And no, it is not an SSTO, because I don't have the, we don't have the technology, Captain. Although we probably do, and SSTOs are pretty easy on this game. But this is just to gain high altitude science, and the, uh, well, the rocket engine is mainly for show because the engineers were uh, very excited with what they've been achieving recently in the aeronautics division. Um, but uh, it's going to help us get a little higher into a, a little higher in the atmosphere so we can gain some high atmosphere science because we do have the vacuum, we now we have uh, the barometer, we have a temperature scanner or a thermometer, we have a materials bay and mystery goo. So we want to use all of this to gain as much science from Kerbin as we can. I'm going to drink some more coffee. Filling Kerman is one of our new recruits. Recruits? Recruits. Um, filling in for the shoes of the greats such as Jebediah Kerman who is uh, moving more onto the rocket side of things and Kurt Kerman who was sadly lost in a training exercise. It was a uh, it was a dark day for the uh, for the um, for the aeronautics division, but uh, they seem to live through it. But anyway, this is strutted together a little bit because we will be coming back quite hard, and we don't want this plane to tear apart um, because new far new far aerospace really does really tear apart your planes. And I'm not going vertically upwards because that means I come pretty much vertically down. Um, although we do have an annoying balance issue, so we want to put fuel back into the 
um, backwards tanks because it'll keep the weight, the mass near the back of the plane, which is good. But anyway, yeah, we don't want to be coming back vertically because then we have to pull out of a dive and that really screws with things. Uh, or it really, it really does mess things up uh, when firm aerospace is uh, tearing your crafts apart. So, you know, we're going to be cautious about this. Obviously, Phil and Kerman doesn't want to die. He, he'll fight for his life. He's going to drink some more coffee. I would have drank it before, but I have very little time. I have to do things really soon. Um, but anyway, we're just going to kind of want to keep it on the 90 degrees so that we can come back fairly easily. It does have tons of fuel, so it won't be a problem coming back. And our air intakes have uh, are starting to run out of air, especially as I pull up like a dumbass and then try and gain control. Uh, so I shut down the engines because we have flipped, had a pretty awful stall, but we pull it back and ignite the engines again. Well, throttle up, spool up the jet engines. And we should probably ignite that rocket engine. There we go. Burning from the side tanks with the oxidizer in them. Um, and that'll push us into the high atmosphere, which is where we need to go. Because uh, we must go higher than any Kerbal in a plane has ever gone before. We haven't broken the sound barrier yet. I think we might on the way back. And if not, I'll build a supersonic plane. But anyway, actually, I uh, tied that to the one action group so I can gain all that science at the same time. Lots of bountiful science that will help us unlock lots of cool things. I'm going to drink some more coffee. Oh, I'll finish it. There we go. No more coffee breaks for me. Anyway, we must prepare to dive back to the sea of Kerbin, and then hopefully land at the runway. That would be rather nice. Um, again, this has solar panels on it because we want some uh, electric charge to keep the uh, keep the pilot warm. Um, and, you know, torque's quite nice. It provides a little extra control. Not brilliantly realistic, but you know. Ooh, and now we're coming up to the sound barrier. 320, 330? Uh, yeah, that's about the sand barrier right there. We have broken the sand barrier for maybe the first time in Kerbal history. That's rather wonderful. Filling looks he looks in awe of the sound explode the sonic boom he just heard. Maybe. Would you hear that in the play I don't know. I'm no scientist. Ah four ooh ooh we're four hundred meters a oh just fell short of four hundred meters a second. Meters a seconds? Yeah I'm really smart, trust me it's fine. Anyway, we're just kind of trying not to go too fast because uh, we don't want Mac effects because those are deadly for planes. But we're trying to pull up and slow down. It's I'm just trying to ease it back basically because uh, you know we don't want to screw this up. It's a very expensive plane. The uh, government grant that paid for this, the uh, the area of government that granted us the money would be quite angry. Um, but of course, I mean, if we need a little bit of money, we can uh, launch more communication satellites or let the uh, military take a look at some of our technology for missiles that's always always fun to watch and uh always a good way of making money for the uh kerbal space program but anyway you're gonna pull around you can see the struts you know holding this plane together planes don't tend to need struts but with new firm aerospace it's you know better not to take risks and those, are the, those are the kw struts they're quite lightweight so you know they're good um, some of the KW struts weigh like a ton, but they're really strong. But I don't know what you'd need struts that strong for. I mean, if you're going to add a ton to your spacecraft, jeez. I was experimenting with some of the uh, 3.5 meter parts, and just kind of making a logical looking launch vehicle, I managed to make an 85 ton lifter, which is pretty good, considering like 100 ton lifters before had to be asparagus, like awful looking rubbish, but now this was just like basically 3.5 meter parts with solid rocket boosters on the side that looked like a proper rocket, looked like the uh, space launch system that the uh, NASA are developing, um, except the solid rocket boosters are a little smaller, but uh, but yeah, it was a really effective lifter. And that new new engine, not the most powerful engine, but the, I don't know, I forgot what it's called, but one of the 3.5 meter engines, it has like something like 2500 kilonewtons of thrust, and uh, in vacuum, its ISP is something like 380 or 370, which is ridiculous for an engine that powerful. I mean, that's it's pretty good. But anyway, I've skipped ahead because that was quite a long flight of me just flying. And now we're coming in at the space center, coming a little fast, so we've uh, throttled down. We want to slow down as much as possible. We are 20 kilometers away, but we are traveling incredibly fast, so we're going to want to try and further this down. Now, the problem with FAR is 
not only it tears apart your crafts these days, but right now it's very hard to slow down. You do just end up getting a lot of speed as opposed to a, you know, slow. You, you want to be going slow, so I'm really shutting down the engines now, just trying to keep it going in the same direction. But now I've just shut them off because we are coming in too fast. Um, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get down low to the runway and then flare quite a lot because, um, you know, we are gonna need to cut off a lot of this velocity. But then I pull too much and it rips off the wings, but it leaves, it r rips off everything except the. Uh, the command pod and the, uh, the little materials bay and a couple of wings but luckily we do have wings and filling Kerman was who was the top of his class in his flight school so he's gonna attempt to fly back to somewhere safe somewhere on land where that won't tear apart his craft like evil water all of that other plane has been destroyed and sent into the ocean now that was terrible but we can fly back and I'm gonna try and use well no filling is gonna try and use the science unit to cushion his fall and hopefully uh, hopefully survive because we can't lose another pilot what would that mean for the aeronautics division they'll be shut down for losing so many people but uh yeah so Phil and Carmen is you know maintaining everything he has this is uh, what makes Kerbal's Kerbal but uh, yeah that was lucky I mean it did tear apart the whole craft because I pulled up too much but it left me a couple of wings, and you can use the rest of the craft as a lifting body, but I'm not sure how you know effective that would be. But anyway, we're slowing down quite nicely now. It's getting manageable at least. And uh, filling, he's not even, look at him, he's just smiling. He's like, eh, I survived that. I'm invincible, man. So he's gonna try and uh, land this, flare as much as possible, slow down, just kind of try and cushion his fall with the materials bay. Lost all that science, but who cares as long as he get the astronaut back, well, pilot back, and he's going to pull up at the last minute, and boom, he managed to use that to cushion off fall, and then the wing to cushion off fall finally, and it's looking good, we've slowed down a huge amount, and we're back, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, but filling is not done yet, he needs to get some science for this, and we haven't done any science on the runway other than like one mystery goo thing, so he's going to run over there, dig up a piece of the runway, piss off the people who built the runway and then he's gonna you know come back and be like hey I got some science and I saved that pod and I saved myself this is the integrity of the aeronautics division we've got in mind that is a pretty uh, interesting thing because that shows that if we make space planes and they come back from space and there's some kind of malfunction there's still a chance we can you know get it back safely whereas if uh, there's a problem with the pod it's probably exploded I mean that shows how robust the planes are um, <laughs> A little annoyed I didn't get the science though, because that was quite a bit, but I'll just fly another mission. But anyway, we're getting up to the runway, four times time accelerate, jittering around, jittering around like a psychopath. And now we're gonna just grab an EVA airport. I don't think a spacesuit was necessary to get here, yeah. The surface may be very hard, yeah, like concrete, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is done now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed that crazy flight um, that went wonderful and i hope that i can make reusable rockets properly work in the next episode anyway this has been chaos food safe i will see you next time